one of the most daring and far-reaching innovations built by the Barefoot Architects of the Barefoot College in 1986 was the construction of a 400,000 liter rainwater harvesting tank under the stage where over 1,000 people can sit and watch performances. Although still considered a crazy idea, the Barefoot Architects connected all the roofs of the college to this underground tank. The overflow from this tank was connected to the underground open well at the edge of the campus. The result? Till today, not one drop of rainwater is allowed to go waste and flow out of the campus. To prevent further rainwater from flowing outside the campus, two shallow open wells were dug solely for recharge purposes. One near the open well, close to the medical section, and the second well at the other end to collect surface runoff from outside. Five India Mark II hand pumps were installed in the 80s to supply emergency drinking water to the common kitchen and to over a hundred staff, families and trainees every day. Three water tanks each with a capacity of 100,000 liters were constructed with ferro-cement by women barefoot architects to store all surplus water for drip irrigation, cleaning utensils, hand flush toilets, as well as watering the plants and trees within the campus. In the late 80s, another significant step was taken to collect rainwater. In the summer months, the Thelonia Hill, which lies close to the Barefoot College campus, radiated heat from rocks and boulders, amounting to increasing temperatures up to 45 degrees centigrade in summer. In contrast, during the monsoons, large quantities of rainwater would flow down the mountains. Thus came the decision to divert this surplus water into the campus. Channels were made. The monsoon water would be directed to flow down these channels into a shallow open well to act as a filter for all the impurities that came down the mountain. The overflow would be diverted into a vast open well, 20 feet wide and over 100 feet deep. Of course, no one believed such quantities of water would ever be collected. But in 2001, not only did the open well completely fill up, but within three days, it was observed that over 300,000 liters of rainwater had also percolated into the ground, recharging nearby irrigation wells and hand pumps. Today, even after four years of drought, the five hand pumps in the college campus are still supplying water day and night, not only to the staff, but also to the whole village. Attempts by villagers to tap the groundwater by sinking deep tube wells up to 200 feet, very close to the campus, yielded no water. In 15 villages in the two districts of Ajmer and Jaipur, barefoot engineers have planned and implemented piped water supply schemes. Pipelines have been laid, taps have been provided in each house, Financial contributions from each house every month ensure repairs and maintain the systems. Perhaps it works because no government engineer is involved and they have been left to decide for themselves. The practice so far elsewhere has been to collect rainwater in nadis in the hope that this water, when it percolates into the ground, would recharge the open irrigation wells in the village. No one even questioned this dubious theory. In actual fact, the evaporation losses from these vast expanses of water is incredible. Nadis are nothing more than evaporation tanks. In three of these 15 villages, in order to increase the recharge of the open well supplying water, shallow open wells, 10 feet wide and up to 20 feet in depth, have been dug through the impervious layers of silt and clay in the beds of the Nadis at a cost of 20,000 rupees. This has artificially improved the percolation rate substantially. After four years of drought, in the three villages of Chota Narena, Raghunathpura and Faloda, 
The community piped water supply systems are still providing water for one hour to their homes every day. A decade of practical experience by the Barefoot College has demonstrated the impact of rainwater harvesting and groundwater recharge. To share this experience, various case studies were presented to senior policymakers and planners from the central and state government in May 2003 in Jaipur. This included presentations from government departments suggesting that water from the Rajasthan Canal, hundreds of miles away, could be diverted for recharge purposes. That 13 or 14 districts of Western Rajasthan are in a totally critical situation. The Filonia model, in fact, demonstrated a simpler and more cost-effective model. Rainwater flowing down seasonal streams and nalas could be diverted into hundreds of unused open wells with famine relief funds. Since the open wells were located close to these nalas and streams, all that was required was channeling of rainwater. Village leaders from the Bilara Panchayat Samiti of Jodhpur district felt this was the answer they had been looking for. At a meeting attended by 32 Sarpanches, the district level officials passed a resolution in the Gram Sabha urging the government to start relief work by immediately implementing the Thelonia model into 1,000 open wells before the monsoons set in. In Thelonia itself, the government has sanctioned relief works to channel water into three dry community open wells so that the 25 dry hand pumps all over the village could be revitalized. Work started on the three well sites in the Thelonia village and it was completed just before the monsoons came. For the first time in the history of the village, the people saw rainwater being diverted into a deep community well in the middle of their village. The result was that three almost dry hand pumps were immediately revitalized. When previously women had to wait for hours for the hand pumps to slowly yield drinking water, now water is flowing throughout the day. The most hardened of skeptics in the village have nothing critical to say now. What now remains to be seen is whether the government of Rajasthan would adopt this community-managed, community-controlled and community-owned low-cost Thelonia method of groundwater recharge on a massive scale.